And God's timing isn't always a part of our timing, but we have to believe as Christians that at the end of the day, God is going to come at the right time, and we've got to trust his timing. So let's just go to God in, in prayer real quick before we begin. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time together to just study your word and study your way. We give you all the praise and the honor, God. Speak to our mind, our body, and our soul. There's somebody here who needs to hear a word from you, God. So I just pray that you would touch them, that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. So today, again, we're going to talk about this. We're going to ask the question, what do you do when God's timing doesn't sync with your clock? You know, many of us have our own clock. We have our own timing. And if we can be honest with ourselves, we know that we want things when we want it, how we want it, and at the time we want it. But sometimes God's timing is not the same as our timing. And so when this doesn't happen, uh, that way, we're tempted to ask the question, what are some of the questions we're tempted to ask? When, God, when will I get to the place that I want to go? We tend to ask, when, God, will this weight off my back be lifted? Anybody have a weight on their back? When, when God, are you going to lift it? Here's another thing. When, God, will I be able to get through what I'm going through? Let me give you a quick story. Many people focus way too heavy on what they're going through. For instance, like this, there was a man who always walked around with this frustrated look on his face. He always looked upset. He always looked like he had something going on. He was always looking like the world and the weight, the weight of the world was on his shoulder. And so a friend of his came up to him and said, look, man, you look so worried all the time. He said, I mean, every time we hang out, you've got this look on your face. You just look like everything is just about to fall apart. And so the man responded to his friend. He said, brother, I've got so many troubles. He said, I've, he said, if something else goes wrong with me today, I have to wait two weeks to get around to worrying about it. He said, that's how worried I am. Now, I want to tell you this. Now, that's giving you problems. You, now, what he was doing was he was giving his problems way too much attention. And see, that's what we do in our lives. Sometimes we give our problems way too much attention. We give our worries too much credence in our lives. And, and the problem is, is that we don't properly wait on the Lord. And that's what an on-time God is all about. That's what believing that God is an on-time God is about. It's about waiting on the Lord. Say, wait on the Lord. And so one way to know that you're uh, in this group, that you're unable to wait on the Lord, is that you're missing some joy and some peace in your life. One of the things that happens when we don't follow God's timing and, and realize that we have to think that way and act that way is that we tend to have let things steal our joy and steal our peace. And another way to know that you're struggling with this is about waiting on God's timing is if your mind feels worn out all the time. If you feel worn out all the time, that's another way to figure out that maybe I'm not trusting in God's timing or or you're stressed out often due to not knowing what's next a lot of times we worry about the future but God said he's going to give us we talked about a couple of weeks our daily bread and so we can't always worry about what's going to happen in the future or we're stressed out because we're constantly thinking when will this relief come however we must remember this and this is what our bible studies is about today as Christians we are to remember that God always control has a role in our waiting so even though we're in a waiting period we need to believe and know that God is is still uh, uh, working some things out. He's still doing some things in the midst of our waiting. So what does that mean? It simply means this, that God holds a purpose for your waiting. So when you're waiting on something, when you're waiting on God's uh, timing, you need to realize that God does hold a purpose in this, and God wants to work things out for you. See, a lot of times when we're going through, we don't believe that God wants to work it out. But the truth of the matter is God does want to work, work things out for you. But in life, he teaches us the important principle of waiting. And sometimes he's having us wait because he's teaching us the principle of waiting. So today, we're going to just study some uh, practices that will help us wait on God's timing, that will help us wait on God's timing. Number one, uh, we hear this word all the time, but we don't always do it. Uh, you must, number one, first practice patience. Somebody say patience, which simply means that you have to have the will to wait. Patience simply means that you have the will to wait. We have to practice to have the will to wait. Some people can't wait five minutes for a hamburger. 
I've seen some folk in the McDonald line acting crazy like, they, like, it, like it was taking forever. So some folk just can't wait on God. Some people don't want to wait on God's supply for their needs or God's supply of their wants and their desires. So we have to learn to practice patience. However, the Bible says this. This is what we have to remember on Isaiah, in Isaiah 40, 31. A great text in Isaiah 40, 31. The Bible says, but they who wait on the Lord. Repeat after me. Say, but they who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We got to remember that text. If you wait on the Lord, the Bible says you'll get some strength. The strength comes in the waiting time. And it says this, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. If you have wings like eagles, what does that mean? You can fly. You'll get to where you need to go. You'll be able to fly over some things if you learn how to wait. They shall run and do what? You'll be able to go through some things and be what? Not be tired. Not be weary. You shall walk. You can walk through any problem, any situation, and not faint. Because God is on your side when you learn to wait on the Lord. So we have to do what? The first thing we've got to do is patience. We have to practice and, and, and work on, on being a willing and patient person. Number two, what we must do is we must learn to hear God's voice. We must learn to hear God's voice. One of the toughest things to do is to how to learn how to hear God's voice. We must listen for further instruction. How many know God is talking? He talks to us all the time. The thing is, are we listening? We're, we may be looking for something audible, but he talks to us through so many different ways in so many different situations. So we must listen for further instruction. Instead of rushing ahead with our solution or our agenda, we can't always lean on what we think. We must trust in what God is actually saying to us. The Apostle Paul writes this in Romans 8.14. In Romans 8.14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Basically, the scripture implies that if we are God's children, if we are followers of God, if we are born again, we will be led by the Spirit. Sometimes you got to put it in your mind. I believe in Jesus. I'm a Christian. I will be led by the Spirit. If you have the right relationship with Jesus and you trust the process, the bottom line is he will speak to you. And he'll speak to you in many ways. He will speak to you. We have further assurance of this promise in Psalms 37. Psalms 37, verse 23 and 24. Psalms 37, 23 and 24. It says this, the steps of a good, righteous, born-again person are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord up, up, upholds him with his hand. God will order our steps. And even when we blow it, if we're truly trying to do his will, he'll lift us up and he'll give us a second chance. That's the good news. That's the thing that we have to realize, that the good steps, the steps of, of, of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So we've got to remember again that we must learn to hear God's voice. And if, if you follow God, he will speak to you. He will, he will lead you in the right direction. And so thirdly, here's another thing waiting requires, is that we calmly accept the Lord's work in our lives. We have to calmly, during this waiting period, we have to calmly accept the Lord's work in our lives. We have to understand that there'll be some situations, there'll be some circumstances, uh, wanted or unwanted, that will come in our lives. But we have to learn that it's God-ordered, that it's God-ordered. And we have to trust him no matter what, no matter how difficult. Paul said this. He helped us out with this. He said, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. And are called according to his purpose. In Romans 8, 28. Let me say that one more time. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So waiting for God's timing in your life is a verb. It's a verb. It's an action. It's an action that we're doing. It's really not inaction. Waiting on God means you're actually doing something. It's a purposeful anticipation that God will accomplish what he promises. 
And in our lives, we have to realize and believe that God will accomplish what he promises. How many of you believe that God's word is true? And that means he will accomplish, he will accomplish what he promised. Simply put this, God simply needs to know, does he hold your trust? He simply needs to know, will you trust me? Will you put your trust in my ability and what I can do and the promises that you read in the word of God? Will you put your trust in me? Do you really believe that I will never leave you nor forsake you? Do you really believe that he knows how much we can bear? Now, there's a saying I want you to uh, think about. It talks about this. How many heard that saying? He will never put more on you than you can bear. How many of you truly believe that? I used to up until last night. Y'all shocked. Y'all like, what are you talking about? Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. Don't get all crazy. Some of our Christian cliches are coming in. We've been saying that for how many years, right? Umpteen years. We even got a song about it. I love it. I sing it in the car. But I thought about it, and, 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 and I thought about it and thought about it last night. And so I, I said, well, let me find out where it says that in the Bible. And so I was looking through my Bible, and I couldn't find it. And I said, you know what? It's going to pop up. So I went on the Internet. Looked it up, typed it in, couldn't find it nowhere in the Bible. But the saying was everywhere. He'll never put more on me than he, than he can bear. You know, than I can bear. You know, we hear that all the time. So I believe this, though. But this is, but, but, but what, this is what I believe, though. See, I believe he does put more on us at times than we can bear. Truthfully, I don't know about you, but I've been in a situation where I said, I can't handle this. I can't do this by myself. But Jesus said to his followers in the book of Matthew, with man, this is impossible. With, with, by yourself, you cannot bear this. It is more than you can bear. But with God, all things are possible. So sometimes it, it does seem like he'll put more on you than you can bear. The truth is he will put something on you that you can't bear by yourself. But with God... Let me put it this way. With God, all things are possible. And see, that's what waiting on God's timing is about. It's about believing that with God, it may be more on me than I can bear, but with God, I can handle it. With God, I can get through it. With God, I can be healed from it. With God, I can, I can have the supply that I need. And so when things get rough, that's when God is going to step in. And see, that's why we've got to put our faith and our trust in God's timing because we cannot bear it by ourselves. But with God, what? Somebody say all. All things are possible. So you can't live your life in worry. We can't live our life in worry, and we can't live a worried life. When we have the tendency uh, to want to know about everything that's going on right away, that can be detrimental to our Christian walk. That can be very detrimental, detrimental to our Christian world. Yes, sometimes knowing everything can even hurt you. The truth of the matter is, think about it. If you knew everything, don't you know that it would hurt you? If you knew what the future was going to entail, you'd be all messed up. Let's tell the truth. You know, that leads you to something that can kill you. It's, it's this silent killer called worry. I'm reminded of the story about this man who uh, one day worried that he would die of cancer. This man was so upset. He, every, everywhere he looked, he'd be looking at documentaries and, and looking at the news and, and learning so much about cancer. So it was so prevalent in society. As we know, this man was worried about it for 30 years, and he worried about it so much, he died of a heart attack. Think about it. Worry can kill you. The cancer didn't knock him out. The worry didn't knock him out. But he had another ailment because he was so worried all the time. And see, that's what we got to do. What am I saying? I'm saying this. You should be concerned about your health, of course. Or, of course, you should do the best you can to stay healthy. Absolutely. But after you've done all you can, you cannot live in worry. And that's when you've got to lean on the promises of God. And that's what waiting on God's timing is about. It's about leaning on the promises of God after you've done all you can. Because the Bible says in Matthew, uh, basically, worry won't add a single hour to your life. Worry will not add a single hour, a single minute, a single day to your life. You have to learn to trust in the one who knows all things. And you have to accept that some questions may never be answered. Some questions may be answered later on. Some questions may be later than that. But all of it will be answered in what? In God's timing. And so we prove to him that we trust him when we refuse to worry. 
when we refuse to worry. So how do you accept God's timing? You've got to realize that God doesn't reveal some things to us because he knows that we can't handle it all at once. He knows that. I know there's got to be somebody here today again that can look back and say, thank you, God, that I didn't know I was going to have to go through that. Thank you, God, I didn't know it right then and there. Or thank God, I didn't know that I was going to have to uh, uh, go through this this long. Because if I did, what would happen? You probably would have quit. 